So we've been using OpenAI's GPT 4.1 Nano model. And on the pricing page, we can see it costs 10 cents per million input tokens and 40 cents per million output tokens. But what exactly are tokens? This is something that confused me when I first started. So let's break it down together because understanding tokens is absolutely crucial for building cost-effective AI applications. In the context of AI models, particularly language models, a token is a basic unit of text that the model processes. They can be whole words, parts of words, individual characters, or even punctuation marks. What's interesting though is that depending on the context and the model you're using, the same word might be tokenized differently. Let me give you an example. The word hamburger, one model might split it into ham, burr, and ger, but another model might go with ham and burger. Same word, different breakdown. Let's look at a simple sentence. I love to eat pizza. When we tokenize this, it becomes I love to eat pizza and exclamation sign. That is six tokens in total. Instead of me just telling you, let me show this in action. Let's head over to OpenAI's tokenizer tool. So platform.openai.com slash tokenizer. This tool is great for really understanding how text gets broken down. Once you're here, click on the show example button. It fills the text area with some sample sentences. If I scroll down, you can see what the tokenizer is doing. It's breaking down the text and showing us several things. Up at the top, we've got our token count and character count. 53 tokens to 52 characters. But the really cool part is down here where it uses different colors to show us how the text is broken down into tokens. Each color represents an individual token. At the top, you will see a model selection control where you can change the model. Go ahead and click on GPT 3.5 and GPT 4. You will see how the tokenization changes. This is because different models learned to break down language in slightly different ways during training. You can see this model broke it down into 57 tokens. The first one was 53 tokens. As you can see, a token is simply a chunk of text with no specific length. As a rough rule of thumb, one token equals about four characters in English text. This isn't exact, but it is useful for quick estimates. Now you might be thinking, okay, tokens are interesting, but why should I care? Well, tokens aren't just technical trivia. They directly impact your application in three important ways. First, tokens determine how much text you can process at once. Every model has a maximum token limit. And if you hit that limit, you can't process any more text. Second, and this is the big one for most developers, tokens determine how much your API calls cost. Remember these pricing numbers we looked at earlier? All based on tokens. And third, tokens affect the quality of your results. If you send too many tokens, you might overwhelm the model with information. Too few, and the model might not have enough context to give you a good response. And this brings us to the topic of context window. We've already learned that every model has a context window which represents how much information a model can process in a single conversation. Well, let me tell you that context window is measured in tokens. Now, GPT 4.1 Nano, the model we are using, can handle up to 1 million tokens in a single conversation. That is absolutely massive. Let me put that in perspective for you. 1 million tokens is roughly 2,500 to 3,000 pages of text. That's equivalent to feeding the entire Lord of the Rings trilogy to the model at once. All of it in the model's memory ready to reference. But, and this is important, there is a catch. When you hit that limit, older information starts getting pushed out to make room for new stuff. Imagine the model's memory as a whiteboard. As you keep writing, you eventually run out of space so you have to erase the oldest nodes to add new one. That's why in tools like ChatGPT or Claude, it's smart to start a new conversation when things get too long. Next, let's talk about something that trips up a lot of developers, the difference between input and output tokens. 
Input tokens are everything you send to the model. Output tokens are everything the model generates in response. Now, why does this distinction matter? Well, there are three key reasons. First, different models have different limits for input versus output. Some models can accept huge inputs, but can only generate smaller outputs. Second, and this is where it hits your wallet, input and output tokens have different pricing. For example, GPT 4.1 Nano output tokens cost four times more than input tokens. Third, Understanding this helps you optimize your API costs. You might structure your prompts differently once you know how the pricing works. Let's make this concrete with a real example. I'm going to show you exactly how much a typical API call costs. So we've got GPT 4.1 Nano's pricing, 10 cents per million input tokens, 40 cents per million output tokens. Let's say our input is what is AI in simple terms and the model responds with this explanation. In this scenario, the input tokens are seven and the output tokens are 84. With some quick math, here's how much it costs. That is about three thousandths of a cent. Seems tiny, right? But here's the thing. In production, when you're making thousands of requests per day, these costs add up fast. If you're making 100,000 requests daily with similar token counts, you're looking at $3.43 per day. That's around $100 per month. And this is for a relatively simple use case. But enough theory. Let's get back to our code and see how we can actually track token usage in our Next.js app using AI SDK. Let me open up the route handler file where we have our stream text function. Now, after the stream text call, but before we return the response, we're going to add some logging to our token usage. The result object that comes back from stream text has this usage property, which we can access. But here's the thing, since we are streaming the response, the usage information is only available after the stream completes. So we need to handle this asynchronously. So result.usage.then, we specify a callback function, which gets access to the usage. And we're going to console log Input tokens as usage dot input tokens, output tokens as usage dot output tokens, and total tokens usage dot total tokens. Input tokens is the number of tokens we send. Output tokens is the number of tokens the model generated. Total tokens is just the sum of both. Save the file, go back to your browser, and in the slash UI slash stream route, send a prompt. What is AI in simple terms? Now let's switch back to the terminal where our Next.js server is running. And after the response finishes streaming, you should see something like input tokens 14, output tokens 66, total tokens 80. Now the input tokens here is 14, but if we go to our tokenizer tool and we enter what is AI in simple terms, we can only see seven tokens for our prompt. This is because the AI SDK automatically includes some system tokens for formatting and context. And this is normal, but just something to be aware of when you're calculating costs. So remember, tokens are the currency of AI. Every request costs token and tokens cost money. Understanding which model to use and how to optimize your token usage is crucial for building cost-effective AI applications. All right, now that we understand tokens and can track them, we are ready to move on to something more interactive. In the next lesson, we'll explore how to implement chat functionality with the AI SDK.